guys, it's Melissa, and today I wanted to talk to you about five ways that my family reduces the amount of trash that we're putting out into the world. So these are five trash reducing strategies that I wanted to share with you. It's been brought to my attention that my family is maybe a little bit unusual. And this came up at mommy and me when we were talking about my girls collecting worms on a rainy day on the sidewalk because they love worms. So today I wanted to share these with you in case it's helpful to you or just to see what another family is doing since I know, especially with the holiday season and a lot of buying and gifting and giving and spending. There's a lot of trash that comes along with that. Here we are by my compost bin where our trash kind of goes out the back door towards the trash cans. We do produce trash in our family. We have the black bin, the green bin, and the blue recycling bin. But in addition to those bins, we have this going on. So my first one for you is soup scraps. So this bag gets used over and over until it can't be used anymore. And this contains things like chicken bones, the core from a cabbage, the tops from carrots, onion skins, celery stalks, any sort of vegetable or meat bone that would go into your soup stock normally, I keep in my freezer until I'm ready to make stock. And I do my stock in really big batches in a stock pot, and then I decant that into either jars or gallon bags, freezing them flat, and I have my homemade stock that's really flavorful and that's ready for me when I'm ready to make soups like lentil soup or chicken soup or I did tortilla soup this week. So this is a real money saver, time saver, and trash saver. Eventually when I strain this out, these things do go into the trash, but they've had two lives. Tip number two, compost. And this is my compost pail. My compost can go into two places. The first one is into my compost bin and in here goes veggie and fruit scraps, eggshells, coffee grounds, anything that's not a meat or greasy item. Here is my compost pile. Now we live on like a quarter acre of land, which is very fortunate, but it also means that we have a lot of yard waste. So when our gardeners do come, they put the leaves, the grass clippings, all of that in here for me. And then I am putting my compost pail into here. That, when I empty the bottom of this composter a few times a year, turns into this. This is a destination for that trash to go that then produces a product in the form of nice, rich compost. You can use this in your garden or as a top dressing on top of your flower pots. It has a lot of nutrition and it's also very alive. It has beneficial bacteria, little worms and things in it. So it really promotes a healthy garden without having to go and buy compost. And also a lot of the compost that you buy is sterilized, meaning it doesn't have all of that rich, microbial life in it. This is not a lot of work. It's very passive and then just a couple times a year I dig out this composter and we start over. Worm bins are the other destination that this periodically will go into. I would say once a week or less I will take any of the delicious sort of more tender scraps from my compost and I give them to my worms. They also like eggshells and coffee grounds. These are two bins. One was like a side of the road freebie this one was a $5 Rubbermaid container. It has holes drilled in the top, and this was a birthday gift to our older daughter. We gave her a batch of worms that I bought from someone I know and a bin, and we let her and her little sister put it together. And since then, we've had a year of wonderful worms. They like to live in dampened newspaper around the texture of like a moist rag. So it's dipped in water and wrung out. And here they are, they're here with with grass clippings. Uh oh, something has gone moldy in there. That shouldn't happen normally. Grass clippings, leaves, and coffee grounds. And here are some worms. They're just little friendly. These are red wiggler worms. You can order them online. You can get them on Craigslist. You could get some from me. And they're working. They're like hard at work turning leaves and a little bit of kitchen scraps. They really love fruit. And they're turning it into black worm poop. The newspaper helps them sort of keep the light out and stay moist and safe under there. They don't like the light. They will eat a half full bin in about three months. This is like hyper rich, very fine compost. It's much more rich and fine than that over there. And if you sift it, it has like 
almost no big pieces in it, so it's good for planting seedlings. You can see it looks almost like coffee grounds, but this is all nutritious, all kinds of like scrap materials as well as shredded newspapers. They love corrugated boxes, so if you have a lot of packages delivered, things like a corrugated cardboard box, especially the brown ones that are not colorful. My children love to soak these in water in a bucket outside and shred them with their hands. The smaller the pieces you give to your worms, the faster they'll eat it. So we love worm bins. It's something kooky about our family, evidently, but it's something that's really fun and people spend tons of money who buy worm castings. If you are one of my relatives, you might be getting this for your holiday gift this year. Number four, these are things that don't require any processing to get to their next life. We save our traditional recyclables. These all have a redemption value for recycling and my children are the beneficiaries of this money. So my children take our cans and bottles to the recycling place by the market and they get to keep that money. So I feel like that is beneficial for the earth. It's good for us as a family in terms of saving money and my kids learn about money and saving by doing that. The second item is what I call breakfast compost and this is just a basin that I threw out my back door and I've been throwing my eggshells and my coffee grounds. This is only a few days of coffee grounds but my eggshells just go straight out the door because I have a lot of them, probably more than I need to be composting. And these and coffee grounds do not need to be composted or processed before putting them in your garden on your plants. So breakfast compost is compost for dummies. Anyone who eats breakfast could make it. And if you have things like rose bushes in your yard, or if you grow tomatoes or vegetables in the summer, what um, even like Montessori teachers do this, these are out in the UV light, like everything, gets killed when it's out in the sun for a few days and then these become super brittle and this is an activity for my little girls i let them crush eggshells and i get a big bowl of crushed eggshells and coffee grounds going and then four times a year or whatever i'll take this and scatter it on top of my plants it's nice to do in the fall and the spring and it really promotes growth and root development and it gives food to the organisms that are living in your soil breakfast compost. My last category is just reducing the number of things that have to be thrown away at all. Sorry for the airplane. In terms of reducing the things that we are consuming that turn into trash, so we take our own grocery bags, but in addition to that, I take my own produce bags to the grocery store. Here they are. So I have always a bag of bags, all different kinds, and these I've shown you before. I will link them down below. I love, love, love. These are 100% cotton with a metal um, closure on them. These are little produce bags. I constantly get complimented. and. I haven't tallied, but that's a huge number of produce bags if I'm going shopping weekly or a few times a week that I'm not even consuming. So I t definitely recommend them and these make a really nice holiday gift. So I'll put that down if you're interested in this. In the same category in terms of reducing the number of things that get thrown away, I have been going through our house cleaning out items that we no longer use, anything that is a name brand a quality toy, a designer thing. I am selling on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, whatever. So I have been doing porch pickup with our old puzzles, snow gear, jackets, anything that we don't need anymore. I just put it on the porch when someone responds to my ad and I come home and there's like $5 under the mat or $20 under the mat. And I've made hundreds of dollars of extra spending money this holiday season just by selling our old things. The other thing that I am selling this year is amazing trash that I see on the side of the road. And I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but just work with me for a moment. I saw a gardener's supply composter disassembled and on the side of the road last week. It retails for $160. So when I saw it, I was like, hmm, I'm gonna go get that. I actually don't have room for another composter right now. So I'm gonna sell that for probably $50. And that's something that's not gonna go in the trash. Someone will benefit from it and I will get some extra spending money. The other thing I found recently is a really nice chandelier that was with a bunch of stuff someone had moved out and put at the dumpster. It's just like a chandelier that I own, and so I know what the value of that item is. It was in pristine, careful condition put out on the curb, and I picked it up and I'm gonna sell it for probably $40, when really it's worth around 120, just to get it to its next home instead of going into the dumpster. 
Those are my ideas for you today. Those are five ways where we as a family are reducing the amount of trash that goes into our black bin and goes to the landfill. I hope you found it helpful. If so, give this a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you liked and let me know what you'd like to see more of on my channel. I am just a regular mom living in a really expensive city, raising two children, and I'm doing my best here. And if I can be helpful to you, that would totally make my day. Thank you so much and I'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.